Did you know that Tesla produces one brand new Tesla every 30 seconds at their Giga Shanghai facility? Today, we're going to talk about how they are able to churn out new cars so quickly and why Tesla was able to go from production hell and near bankruptcy in 2017 to cementing their place as one of the top manufacturing companies in the world just five years later. So Tesla makes a few different cars, like the Model S, X, and 3, and they all go together a little differently. But for the sake of today's example, we're going to focus just on Tesla's most popular vehicle, the Model Y, and specifically the Model Y variation that they are building at the Gigafactory in Texas, because this is the most clear example of how Tesla makes a vehicle in a way that no other company on Earth can match. The first stage of this process is going to be fabricating the various panels and vehicle structure that make up the Model Y body. To do that, Tesla is going to use a process called stamping. This is pretty simple. You have two halves of a die mold that hold the shape of the part that you want to make. Then you place a sheet of metal in between those two halves, typically that's going to be aluminum, and then the machine stamps down on that sheet of metal to form it into the desired shape. There are going to be dozens of these stamping machines involved in fabricating all of the components that make up the body structure. The next step from there is going to be piecing them all together. That's where the big robot arms and conveyor belts start to come into play. They are welding together all of those stamped pieces to begin forming the skeleton of the Model Y body, moving from one robot down the line to the next, each one adding a new piece of the puzzle. This is what they call the body in white stage of the process. The car is not actually white at this point. It doesn't have any paint at all. I don't know why they call it that. But once the skeleton frame is complete, they're going to start attaching all of the body panels like the fenders, the doors, the hood, and the trunk. These can't just be slapped on by robots. So there are going to be workers attaching and bolting down all of this bodywork. In theory, they would be ensuring that everything is fitted perfectly straight and even. But in practice, Tesla has been known to fall short on that aspect, though apparently Giga Texas is turning that around with nice, tight fits on the bodywork. From there, we go on to the paint shop, where the assembled body gets sprayed with primer and then sanded down to a level surface. Then it goes through a whole series of spraying and dunking and drying sessions, getting multiple layers of paint and gloss, depending on the finish. White is the easiest, that's why it's the cheapest. Red is the most complicated, with multiple layers of color and metallic speckles, and that's why it's more expensive. After the paint is dried, buffed, and polished, the body goes off to have all of the interior paneling fitted, the electronics wired up, and the glass installed. Now, simultaneous to all of that, there's going to be a separate process going on to manufacture the Model Y's underbody and powertrain. For that, they're going to start with a structural battery pack. This creates the central frame section of the vehicle in addition to holding all of the 4680 battery cells along with the integrated cooling and electrical architecture. Then to that battery pack, they are going to directly bolt on the front and rear Giga castings. And that is the entire underbody ready to go in a few steps. The electric motors are then integrated into the Giga castings, one in the front and one in the back. Each is connected through a gearbox into the drive axles for all four wheels. The suspension is all tied into the castings and the brakes and wheels are added to create a big rolling structure kind of like a skateboard. Then on top of the battery pack, they are going to lay down the carpeted flooring, attach the center console and interior trim, and then bolt down all four seats directly to the top of the structural battery pack. Then the last big step is going to be to drop the finished body directly on top of the frame and powertrain assembly. The two are connected together by a series of bolts all around the perimeter of the structural pack and castings. From there, the Model Y gets the finishing touches from a team of people doing the final quality control. Again, in theory, this is where any defects and issues are identified and fixed before the vehicle rolls out to be delivered to the customer. 
Now, that is how the process works at Giga Texas, and it's fairly similar at Giga Shanghai. So now you have some additional context for how incredible it is that all of that can be done so efficiently that they can produce a brand new Tesla every 30 seconds at the Shanghai factory. Have you heard of the sneaker company Vessi? They are today's sponsor and my favorite pair of shoes. So why are Vessi's my favorite shoes? Well, I live in Vancouver and it rains a lot. Too much, most would say. But I don't have to worry about my feet getting wet because Vessi shoes are 100% waterproof, which is perfect for the unpredictable weather of Vancouver. They are made from Dymatex, a dual climate knit material that keeps you cool in summer and warm in colder weather. It doesn't feel like it should be waterproof. They are comfortable, lightweight, and breathable. Vessi shoes have become my go-to pair of shoes to wear, but I saw that they had a new Men's City Classic that are slimmer, sleeker, and lighter than ever, so I sprung for the all-black versions, which look and feel amazing to wear. I recently got a puppy, so I'll be wearing this new pair a lot. Vessi has several styles and colors to choose from for both men, women, and kids. So if you're looking to finish your holiday shopping, get the gift that they will love and will help keep them dry and warm. Again, Vessi's are my go-to shoes sitting by my door and they are giving away a pair of socks of your choice for the first 100 shoes sold using my code, the Tesla space. And if you missed your chance to get a pair of free socks, Vessi's early Black Friday sale is on now. So get your style and size you want now before they sell out at Vessi.com slash the Tesla space. It's safe to say that Tesla would be nowhere near where they are today as a company without their Gigafactory in Shanghai. This was the company's first attempt at building an electric vehicle factory from the ground up. For the first seven years, they were just operating out of an old refurbished General Motors plant in Fremont, California. They had to put up tents just to make enough room to build the Model 3. The pace of development at the Shanghai Gigafactory is a true marvel. Tesla broke ground in January of 2019 and had delivered the first made-in-China vehicles by December of that same year. That's quite the feat, and it's something that the company hasn't been able to replicate with their two subsequent factories in Berlin and Austin, each taking about two years from construction to delivery. And now, in the fourth quarter of 2022, we are looking at Giga Shanghai production reaching 87,706 vehicles in the month of October. And if we extrapolate that out over 12 months, then we end up with about 1,050,000 vehicles per year. This is well over the original declared manufacturing capacity for the factory, which was supposed to peak at 750,000 cars per year. This boost in production capability is thanks to a full upgrade of the production line that was carried out over the summer, just as the factory was coming back from several months of lockdowns and restrictions on the city of Shanghai. And the work has been more than worthwhile. Even with a full month of production shutdown followed by another month of limited closed loop operation, Giga Shanghai had built 554,778 vehicles in the first 10 months of 2022, a 59% increase year over year. The output at Giga Shanghai in September was so high that the volume actually overwhelmed Tesla's usual strategy of using an end of quarter delivery push to hit delivery numbers. Elon Musk said on a recent earnings call, there weren't enough boats, there weren't enough trains, there weren't enough cars to actually support the wave. Whether we like it or not, we actually have to smooth out the delivery of cars intra-quarter because there just aren't enough transportation objects to move them around. Giga Shanghai has gotten so good at building Teslas that the company is shipping employees over from China to their Fremont, California factory to help increase production. Going back to what we had said about the original Tesla vehicle factory, it was built in the 1960s to build vehicles for GM, which is how it operated for decades. In the later years, going back and forth between General Motors and Toyota before finally closing up for good. That left it open for Elon Musk to swoop in and buy up the property for cheap. This was long before he became the richest person in the world, long before Tesla even made a single dollar of profit. It's also true that to accomplish their goals with the Fremont plant, Tesla had to get creative. They set up massive tents or sprung structures to accommodate the Model 3 and then Model Y manufacturing. 
When Tesla introduced the GigaPress casting machine to their production line, that wouldn't fit inside the original factory, and it had to be installed in the parking lot where it remains to this day. Even so, Tesla has managed to push the vehicle output from their aging factory far beyond what GM or Toyota were ever able to produce in a year. Actually, with a rate now over 650,000 units annually, Tesla Fremont is the single most productive vehicle factory in the United States. It's really good, but it could be better. Elon Musk is determined that there is still room to grow productivity at Fremont. He's targeting around 750,000 vehicles per year at peak. So to help with that, Tesla has imported some production experts from China. According to a report from Bloomberg, Tesla will dispatch staff, in particular automation and control engineers, to assist efforts to increase output in Fremont, where Tesla produces the Model S, X, 3, and Y vehicles. About 200 people will head to California on assignments that will last at least three months, with the first workers arriving in November. Of course, that's great news for Fremont, but also for Tesla's United States operations as a whole. We're seeing what one factory can still accomplish as it reaches a production maximum, but we're at the same time watching a brand new factory ramp up in Texas, and the lessons learned from Shanghai and Fremont can only make the newest Gigafactory even stronger. At Giga Texas, the team announced that they had reached 20,000 Model Y vehicles built this year on October 30th, just 151 days since their official start of production. This is particularly impressive when we remember that it was only on September 17th that they built their 10,000th Model Y. So that gives us 10,000 vehicles in 43 days for a run rate of around 1,600 per week. That's up from 1,000 per week reported on August 20th. So this is great news. It's still well below the intended capacity at Giga Texas right now, which should reach about 5,000 per week or 250,000 cars per year. But things weren't always so easygoing for Tesla. When the company first launched their Model 3 in 2017, it was a revelation for electric vehicles. Long range, high performance, good looks, maximum safety rating, and autonomous driving capabilities for a very reasonable price tag. The car was a massive hit, and the order books were going crazy. Unfortunately, Tesla had nowhere near enough production capacity to meet the explosive demand for the Model 3. This led to a period from 2017 to 2019 that Elon Musk has labeled production hell. Basically, the whole operation was in shambles. They couldn't get enough cars out the door to make enough money to keep the company above water, tethering on the edge of bankruptcy. Elon Musk was living in the factory and sleeping on the production floor in a desperate effort to hold Tesla together. So that sucked, but obviously they got through it, and now there are Tesla Model 3s basically everywhere you look these days. But going through that hardship, the company was able to learn a lot of valuable lessons that only come with great adversity. The biggest takeaway from that period was the importance of automation. Elon likes to talk about the machine that builds the machine, and that doesn't necessarily mean removing the people. Tesla still employs plenty of factory workers, but it's about increasing the amount of volume that a set number of people can produce. And that means letting robots shoulder the heaviest burdens around the factory. If you look at a video from a Tesla Gigafactory, everything is always in motion. The car is always moving from one stage of production to the next, being propelled forward by some kind of robot arm or conveyor belt or whatever. That's the only way you can spit out one of them every 30 seconds. And then, on top of that, it's not just about automating every process, but actually removing as many processes as you possibly can. Another bit of Elon's philosophy, the best part is no part. The best process is no process. So that's why Tesla implemented things like their Gigapress machine. It's a way to use die casting on an epic scale to create big chunks of vehicle body with only one part. So for example, manufacturing the rear underbody of the Model Y used to involve 300 individual robots. And the reason for that is that a typical vehicle frame is made from a bunch of little parts all stuck together either by welding or fasteners or adhesives. 
So you need automated stamping machines to fabricate all of those bits and then a bunch of robot arms to put them all together. In order to fix that, Tesla enlisted the top die casting company in the world, an Italian firm called IDRA, and they had them build the world's largest and most powerful casting machine, the Gigapress. And with that, 300 robots were replaced by one singular machine and casting process. And that's only gotten better with the new Gigafactories at Texas and Berlin, where they make for the rear and front of the Model Y frame with these casting machines. The Cybertruck is going to be built in the same way with an even bigger casting machine. And then for the future, Tesla already has plans to build an even smaller and cheaper vehicle than the Model 3, something that might cost as little as half the price. The way that they're going to do that is not by making an inferior quality product, but by using advanced manufacturing to push the production time and cost to an all-time new low. That could mean casting the entire vehicle in just one big part, like a Hot Wheels car. It's something that Elon has been wanting to try for a while now. So that's how Tesla has grown this massive manufacturing empire. They started in hell, they grew on their own with their Chinese Gigafactory, they conquered the world, and now they are using everything that was learned over that time to push the company into new heights as their latest Gigafactory creations finally come online. The goal at Tesla has always been to grow production at least 50% year over year. Mostly, they exceed that goal, so it's likely that by this time next year, Tesla will be up to one car every 15 seconds, maybe more. That begs the question, will there ever be a day when you can just buy a Tesla whenever you want without having to sit on a waiting list for god knows how long? What year do you think that might happen for North America? Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.